Hey, hey, Mario Rodriguez here, and it's time for another live viewing of Dragon Ball Super, or, well, you know what I mean. I'll watch it live, and then you guys will see my reactions, my thoughts, my synopsis, and all that. And yes, we're up to episode 103. It's almost um, 9.45. It's actually 8.55. It's almost 9, so I got it for five more minutes, but I'm here, I'm ready, I'm set. And, well, this episode's going to be about Gohan. I guess it's going to really showcase Gohan and, I guess, how badass he is and the results of his training and all that stuff. But at the same time, the last episode did left off with Brianna from Universe 2 being very pissed at Android 17 for defeating two of her people and also interrupting the transformation earlier on in the episode. So, I don't know how they're going to do it because it looks like that the trailer ended with, like, they're going to fight, but the preview's like, it's going to be all about Gohan. So... We'll see what happens. I don't know how that doesn't just flat out vaporize her. Like, jeez. Gohan, show no mercy. Showdown with Universe 10. Let's get started. Let's see the results of Gohan's training. This is like a Sailor Moon speech. It's literally like a Sailor Moon speech before she fights the bad guys. Oh god, so 17 is making like big speeches too. They're both doing big speeches. Come on, Goku. Just turn Super Saiyan or something or teleport out of there. Come on. Oh god, stop doing that pose. You already did that last episode. That is so weird. So, this is the exact same attack Piccolo used against 17, and 17 pledged himself by using a shield. Now I do the same thing on Goku, but 17. Oh wow, she broke 17's shield. What the fuck? Oh no. Ubonia and Ruba are our last hope, and they're gonna go against Piccolo and Gohan. So, basically, bye bye, Universe 10. What the hell's that energy ball in the sky? Piccolo, do something, come on! He literally did the same thing in the same episode. Although it's effective though. At least this one didn't have a force field, right? So, no, well, Piccolo got him out. Well, to be fair, it's the first time that techniques actually worked and not like Android 17 with a force field. But it still feels weird that we saw the exact same technique by two different people in the same episode. It's like weird. Aww. Like Albany's family, wife and kid. Oh, they're really making it like, you know, now Gohan's going to feel all guilty and stuff, but... Oh, man. Well, at least she's sad. She's actually sad and not like, oh, well, like the other god was. See, at least Gohan feels the consequences, the ratifications of all this. Goku's just like, hey, this is fun. Let's beat up strong guys. So Goku and Hit had to team up to fight one of the... Um, one of those Pride Soldier guys, and Goku's in his super, his regular Super Saiyan God form. That'll be an interesting new episode there. Okay, so for my review, they actually did put both things together. I actually thought they were gonna like focus too much on Gohan and forget about, uh, you know, Brienne or Re Brienne fighting against Andrew 17. But no, this episode starts off right there. You get to see Re Brienne and Andrew 17 fighting each other and giving like their Sailor Moon type speeches. Like it really reminds me of those speeches when Sailor Moon comes in and says, You, how dare you do evil? Blah, 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 blah. I'm the one who represents love. I shall stop you. And 17 actually had to play along. Yes, I am evil. You cannot stop me. What's more powerful? Love or my will and all, oh god, it's just corny. But uh, even Krillin says 17 likes to play around. But anyways, um, yeah, 17 fights out with Brienne, Rue Brienne, and um, that is weird. Her regular name is Brienne, her transformation is Rue Brienne. And um, who was the other guy fighting? Oh, Goku was still having trouble with that girl, the other girl that was throwing all these fireballs and stuff. And the weird thing is, she did the exact same thing Andrew 17 did in, you know, the fight against Piccolo back in Dragon Ball Z. She also did, like, the lots of fireballs surrounding Goku, you know, purposely missing, and then they all go on him. But the weird thing is, like, I don't know, like, like I kind of wanted to see what Goku would have done. I kind of wanted to see if Goku would, was gonna, I guess, try to port out of the way or something. But Android 17 just came out of nowhere to do his force field again to, I guess, remind us again of how the force field saved him the last time Piccolo did that. And then... What surprised me was that Rebrand actually punched and smashed the force field to bits and everything. But, um, yeah, 17 gave Rebrand a hard time. Goku, um, like, learned and kept up with, um, the other girl's techniques. I forgot her name. But before they could get, like, defeated for good, the Yardarat character comes in, grabs them both, and they just go away. So they live to fight another day. Or, you know, for now. And, um, Gohan got to fight now against Botamo, and Botamo was the big heavy guy from the first tournament we had, you know, versus, you know, Beerus's guys against Champa's guys in the story arc earlier on, and, um, yeah, he's a big guy, and none of the attacks can hurt him and everything, so it's kind of tough, 
Um, I forgot, did Goku actually lose that first fight? I, I kind of think he did. I'm not sure. I, it's, it's been a while. But Gohan wasn't in that tournament, though. For, so for Gohan, this was his first time fighting this guy. And, um, yeah, he was actually, like, first it looked like he was, like, Goku just punching away like an idiot, even though, like, nothing's going on, like, your, your attacks have no effect on him, and you're like, what's going on? But, um, and apparently Piccolo and Goku told Gohan about, like, how he's resistant, but Gohan was just punching away, like, nonstop. It's kind of funny how, like, the characters are talking, and you just hear, like, like, nonstop in the background while they're talking and everything. But, um, apparently Gohan was using his own body against them, Kind of like how they do with the Juggernaut and the Blob, that they're kind of defenseless. You can't move them, but if you actually get them off their feet, they're defenseless. So, Gohan was actually, like, doing the attacks to, like, lift them up off the ground at least a little bit. And so he's kind of off the ground. He can't, like, fly. He can't, like, jump because he can't get the, you know, the... the you know what I mean? You can't like get on the ground to kind of propel yourself outward. He can't do anything. He's stuck in that position and he's trying to blast Gohan and I guess Gohan is too small for him to hit him or whatever and Gohan eventually does knock him right out and he's out of the out of the match there. And then these two new guys show up. One of them is called um Oh god, I forgot their names already. Oh god. Um I forgot. Well, I'll just say the Sen the Sanso Ken guy and the other guy. So the Sanso Ken guy challenges Gohan and the other guy challenges Piccolo. Yeah, I was going to say Vegeta. Challenges Piccolo. And I got so pissed off because right off the bat, kabam, just sends Piccolo flying away. I'm like, dude, come on, Piccolo, do something. He hasn't really done like all that much in all Dragon Ball Super. I mean, the most he's done was fighting against Frieza's soldiers because the fight with Frost, I mean, yeah, he had a plan, but most of the fight was just him charging up the Mountain Coast of Pole, warping all over the place, and not really doing much. So, like, I wanted him to have a good, a good fight, you know? So, um, Gohan is fighting against the Sanso Ken guy. I guess his technique is that he kind of splits himself into many... I, I would call it, because it is kind of like the afterimage effect. Like, a lot of them, and when that happens, you can't sense them at all, so you can't sense his attacks. And apparently, Gohan isn't as trained as Goku, and then he can't sense, like, Ki that well, so he has to see everything with his eyes. So he's in big trouble, he's getting attacked. And also, um... Apparently, um, like during a commercial break or whatever, the Yadarod guy knocked out some other guy, and that guy was from, I believe he was also from the same universe. I'm not 100% sure, but the bottom line is that these two guys in particular were the last two guys of Universe 10. So if they go down, that's it for Universe 10. So now they fight a bit more intense because they got a lot more to fight for. There's no, no one else to pick up their slack. So, um... Piccolo keeps fighting against the guy. He finally gets some offense. I'm like, thank God. But the weirdest thing is that he actually does the same attack again. He throws all the fireballs and whatever and makes them all go against the guy. Now, to be fair, this time they actually do hit the guy. There's no force field. Like, so, like, I don't know. It's weird. They use the same technique twice in the same episode with two different characters. It, it's, like, weird. It's weird that Seventeen came in to save Goku the same way instead of Goku doing anything to get out of it. But the thing is, I, I do give it props that at least this time it actually worked. This time the guy took like the full impact of everything and then Piccolo just threw him off and that's the end of him. You know, he's he's done for. So now um, this guy, I, I want to say his name is like U Ubi or something, but I forgot his actual name or, or, or Ubi or something like that. But anyways, now like there's even more stress. It's all on him. He's the last one. He's going to go against Gohan. But it's so weird though. Like like the universe guys, Goasu has faith in him, but don't you realize that even though you defeat Gohan, he says to like defeat all the other fires from all the other universes. Like it still would have been tough even if he beat Gohan. So, anyways, um, Gohan got the new strategy that he got like more powered up. Like you can't tell if that's his mystic form or just say more powered up. But basically, he's purposely allowing the guy to hit him so that the moment they hit him, at least he's there and Gohan can counterattack and everything and that's his strategy. But unfortunately, um, Gohan is still taking damage. So basically he powers up to be strong enough to kind of withstand a hit and fight back but he's still taking damage and the other guy is still fighting. So they both fight it out. Eventually the guy gets tired from doing the Zanso Ken thing so often. Now he's kind of tired, he can't do it anymore. So Gohan is just playing flat out, whooping his ass and everything. And Gohan finally finishes off with the, why am I doing that? It's uh, Kamehameha, the blast him away and everything. And that's it for Universe 10. And um, to point it, not to point it, to, to drive the point even home, like to drive it home even more, that's an expression I think, um, there's a little like a, uh, 
I don't know, an amulet, a brace, a necklace or something that has a picture of that dude with his wife and kid that of course he has his wife and kid back home that he's fighting for because I'm sure most of these, not maybe not all, but most of these guys got some sort of family or someone back home that you're fighting for. So it just kind of, it's like a grim reminder and everything. And then Universe 10, that's it. You know, the Xenos are like, oh, Universe 10 is all gone, whatever. And uh, the Grand Priest is like, this universe will be erased. And that's it. They're gone. But the difference here is that this time, the angel that's with them, I don't know her name though, but this particular angel, she was actually sad and she felt bad. I think she, was, she felt bad for the God of Death of God of Destruction of, um, of her universe and everything. So she, yeah, she really felt bad, which is a big contrast from the other one from Universe 9 that was just like, oh well, or whatever. So that's a big difference right there. And of course, Gohan sees it. And that's the thing, though, like, like I said when I was watching the episode, that's the biggest difference between Gohan and Goku. It really shows how Gohan is just more mature of a character. You can say whatever you want to say about him, but he is more of a real world character that started off living in the woods and all that stuff and all this weird shit happened, but he still adapted to somehow become a more, like a normal individual with a normal life, a normal job, a wife and kid and everything. He's not naive and everything. So the point really gets driven home with him because he looks serious and he understands the full consequences, the full ramifications. Like, he didn't really want to destroy Universe 10. He took out that guy. The universe is gone, including the guy's wife and kid. He feels remorse. While Goku's just, I don't know. He's either, yay, let's fight more guys. Or he's like, oh, man, Universe is gone. I kind of so Let's fight more guys. Let's fight versus Hit again, you know. Or fight versus Jiren. Hey, you know. So that's the big difference between Goku and Gohan. Gohan is at least smart enough. To understand the full ramifications of everything, Piccolo kind of tells him, "Well, come on, let's go, cause we gotta, we gotta keep on going." And you know how it is. Bottom line, it's their universe or yours. You gotta do what you gotta do for you. You gotta like protect your universe. I mean, it's like a real shame what's going on with the other ones, but you gotta protect. I mean, Gohan has the Dell and Pan to fight for, and everyone else. So. You know. So anyways, the next episode appears to be, because it just, that's the cliffhanger. The cliffhanger just kind of reminds us that, oh, Universe 9 and 10 are gone, and the fights are going to start. And we see Hit facing another character, um, but the preview shows that um, Hit and Goku are teaming up to fight against one of the Pride Troopers, the one that looks kind of like a rabbit, kind of looks like Beerus, kind of, sort of, like a very skinny Beerus. And um, Gohan, I mean Gohan, Goku turns regular Super Saiyan God. Which is kind of rare because we rarely see Super Saiyan God. Now, one thing I do want do want to say, I do want to find out about this. There is a um, there is a Dragon Ball Super manga, and the manga follows the story. Like for some reason, it skips out the entire Frieza thing though, but it does copy everything else, and it does have little details here and there. I mean, one of the details that pisses me off so much that I wish they kept was they actually showed um, when Trunks. Kibito and Kaioshin and, you know, future Trunks in their timeline were trying to fight against Babidi, Dabura, and Boo and everything. No, well, just Dabura and Babidi. And during the battle, both Kibito and Kaioshin died and Trunks somehow survived and killed both Dabura and Babidi. So in that world, Majibu never came out. They should have shown that flashback. That would have been so fucking awesome showing the flashback. I, I, I think they showed it, but it wasn't the same. They didn't, they didn't have the, the characters die. And it's such an important part because... Because Kaioshin dying in that battle explains why there's no Lord Beerus around to stop Goku Black in that timeline. But bottom line, um, during the fight with Goku Black, Vegeta actually turns regular Super Saiyan God and uses this technique that I guess he's regular Super Saiyan God, but the moment he hits him, like that split second, he turns into, you know, Super Saiyan Blue and hits him, turns back to God form, and it's so fast that you don't notice, you just see Vegeta as a Super Saiyan God fighting. But the bottom, the point I'm trying to make is that we get to see in the manga, Vegeta turning Super Saiyan God, like the regular form that we never got to see. We just got, we just saw him just go straight to Super Saiyan Blue with the Restoration F arc and everything. So, now that we're seeing Goku go back to Super Saiyan God, because I honestly thought we were not going to see ever again that was just the beginning but now he's going to do it i really hope that that somewhere in this arc somewhere in this tournament or whatever we actually get to see vegeta turn super saiyan god i want to see that i want to see that because as far as we know as far as the anime's canon is vegeta i guess somehow skipped it and turned just straight out super saiyan blue or something i want to see him super saiyan god please make it happen so anyways guys those are my final thoughts i guess it kind of went off tangent there but it's interesting to see the manga on the manga i think the first volume is out so i do recommend checking it out because it's very awesome there's 
a lot of differences. There's a lot more differences in this manga as opposed to the Dragon Ball Z manga and the original show. The original show just had filler. That's all it did, but not that many differences. I mean, the only difference I could think off the top of my head was that in the manga, when they were a Namek, Frieza himself killed um, Dende's brother, while in the, in the anime, I think Dodoria did it. So that was like the only difference I could think of in the manga. Everything else is pretty much the same, just, you know, filler, 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 or whatever. But anyways, again, I'm going off tangent here. But, um, yeah, check out the manga. Let's see the next episode, episode 104, to see Goku, the return of Super Saiyan God, teaming up with Hit to fight against the Pride Troopers. Let's check it out. See you next Saturday.